Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at something a little bit different than we normally do on this channel, but it's super real world applicable for anyone who's interested in the math behind it. And that is a method that will 100% mathematically guarantee that you save money on gas. With that said, let's get into it. So no, this is not a clickbait video in any way. There is a mathematical way that will save you money at the pump every single time. And this isn't one of those things you've probably heard before, like buy gas at night or get an electric car or ride your bicycle. No, this will literally save you money every single time you pull up to the pump. No gimmicks, just straight up math. Now we're gonna be looking at two options for the decision that you have to make every time you go to the pump. And that is, do you fill your tank? So for example, if you have an empty tank, do you just fill your tank? Or do you put some fixed number of dollars in? And we're gonna call those two methods a fixed number of units of gas, so liters or gallons, depending where you're from, because some places in the world still use gallons instead of liters. Now at the end of the video, I'm gonna go over a real live example with real numbers that we experience on the prices here in Canada, but I'm going to use both liters and gallons in that example because America. So with that said, we're going to look at both options that you can pay. So with a fixed number of liters or gallons or a fixed number of dollars spent at the pump. And we're gonna see which one of these will save us money every single time. So let's take a look at the first option that we could do and that's a fixed number of units of gas. So here we're gonna call it the fixed number of liters or gallons that I put into my tank every time I pull up to the gas station. To simplify things, we're gonna look at just two cases, two weeks, but Mathematically, you could extend this into an infinite number of times you put gas in your tank. So we'll have week one and week two, and now I'm going to define my variables. So P1 will represent the price in week one, and similarly, P2 will represent the price in week two. Now I have a fixed number of units, so X will represent the units of gas in week one, but the same number of units will be purchased in week two, so I will also let that equal X. Now the algebra for this one is simple. The dollars I spent on gas is just gonna be price, of gas times the amount of gas I pumped. So it's just going to be P1 times X for week one and P2 times X for week two. That's the price of gas times the number of units in my tank. So I can simplify this to see how much money I spent in total by just adding these two numbers together. So the total amount spent on gas is just the amount spent in week one, P1 times X, plus the amount spent in week two, P2 times X. And if I want to know how much gas I purchased in terms of units, well, I purchased X twice. So I could say that the total units of gas was two X. If I want to simplify the formula for the average cost per unit, I'm going to look at the formula total dollars spent over the total amount of gas that I've purchased. So the formula looks like this. Again, total dollars spent over total units of gas. And I just plugged in those two previous equations. So on the top, I have dollars spent, which is P1 times X plus P2 times X. And on the bottom is total units of gas that I purchased, which is just 2X. Once again, this actually works for an infinite number of trips to the pump, but to save the rigorous math involved with higher numbers, I'm going to leave it at two, but I will look at a real life example with numbers at the end so you can see what it looks like with eight weeks passing. So stay tuned for that if it's something you're interested in. You'll notice there's an X in every term, so we're actually gonna cancel all of those out and it's going to simplify to the average cost per unit equaling P1 plus P2 over two. And that looks just like an average you would expect. You add up all of the prices and you divide by the number of different prices there are to get the mean. We call this the arithmetic mean, but there's another way we can fill our tank. And this is with fixing the number of dollars we spend every time we go to the pump. So to keep things even, we're going to also use just two weeks to explain this. And I'll get to the proof right after we look at this. So week one and week two, are going to be denoted by P1 equaling the price in week one, just like before, and P2 denoting the price in week two. Now X1 is the liters or gallons in week one, and X2 is the liters or gallons in week two. These are not going to be the same number because I'm fixing the number of dollars I spend, not the number of units I put in my car. What I am fixing is the dollars I spend. So D is going to represent the dollars I spent in week one, and it's going to be the same number in week two. So D can also represent the dollars spent in week two. Now, if I want to know the total amount that I spent on gas in week one, then it's going to use this formula. P1 times X1 is equal to D. That is, if I have a fixed amount of dollars D, it must equal the price of gas times the quantity of gas that I put in my tank. Now I can rearrange this to isolate for X1, which is going to be equal to D over P1. In other words, the total amount of gas that I would have pumped is going to be equal to the dollar amount that I spent divided by the price of gas per unit. Similarly, this is true for week two, where I have P2 times X2 must be equal to D, the amount I spent in week two, and this can be rearranged as well to solve for X2, and that's going to give me the total amount spent, whatever my D value is that I spend per week, 
divided by the price in week two. So this means that the total amount that I spent in gas is going to be D in both weeks or 2D. However, it's going to be a little more complicated for how much gas I had. And for the amount of gas, it would just be X1 plus X2, which I've rearranged to look like D over P1 plus D over P2. Now I'm going to use the same formulas before to find my average cost per unit. And that is just total dollars spent over total units of gas. And you'll see it looks a little bit messier than before. And that's totally normal because the denominator is going to be variable based off of the prices in each week. So I get 2D all over D over P1 plus D over P2. If you take a look at the screen, you'll see that that's just the total dollars spent D twice over the total number of units of gas, which in week one is D over P1. And in week two, that's D over P2. So I just add them together. Now I will simplify this for you because it does look very confusing, but take my word for it. It simplifies to the average cost per unit equaling two times P1 times P2 all over P1 plus P2. And that right there is going to be my average cost per unit when I fix the number of dollars I spent. Now here's where it gets interesting. If I pay by the same number of dollars spent every time I go to the pump, it will always be less than or equal to fixing the number of units. This is just a mathematical truth. What you see on the top is the average cost per unit that we got when we fixed the number of units that were purchased. And we got the arithmetic mean. Now the bottom one is called the harmonic mean and it's a different calculation, but it will never be greater than the arithmetic mean. This means that if you fix the number of dollars, you will never pay more than if you fix the number of liters. So let me prove this in math terms first, and then we'll get onto a real number example that might be a little easier to follow. So I wanna prove that the arithmetic mean or P1 plus P2 over two is always greater than or equal to the harmonic mean, which is two P1 P2 over P1 plus P2. So if I clean it up a bit, it's gonna look something like this. This is what I'm trying to prove. And if I cross multiply, then I'm gonna have P1 plus P2 squared is greater than or equal to 4P1P2. And again, all I do is cross multiply. Now I'm going to expand the left-hand side because this is in fact a perfect square trinomial. And that's gonna give me P1 squared plus 2P1P2 plus P2 squared. And the right-hand side has not changed. Now, again, these are the same thing. It's just, remember in grade 10 math when you do A plus B squared is equal to A squared plus 2AB plus B squared? Well, that's what we're doing here. It's a perfect square trinomial that we're just expanding out. Now, the next logical step is going to be to take this 4P1, P2 to the other side. And when I do that, I'm going to collect like terms, which is the 2P1, P2, and simplify to this next line, P1 squared minus 2P1, P2 plus P2 squared is greater than or equal to zero. And my final line looks like this. I simply factor my perfect square trinomial. And again, if you look at these, with the same premise as before, they're the same thing. And this is something that you learn in grade 10 algebra. If you have any questions about it, feel free to ask me, but these are in fact the same line. Now this final line is really easy to prove because the square of anything must be greater than zero or anything squared is positive. It doesn't matter what number it is, positive or negative, if you square it, it will always be positive. And so the conclusion that you get from this inequality is that the fixed dollar amount is never more expensive per unit than fixed number of units. And the fixed dollar amount always gives a lower cost per unit if the price changes. Now, if we know anything, it's that the price of gasoline changes all of the time. It's a commodity that's made from oil and oil's price is dependent on the market. So if we have gas prices changing all the time, then it makes sense to only pay using a fixed number of dollars, not a fixed number of units. This will always be mathematically true. Now I've drafted up an example that uses eight weeks. So it's a little easier to see and it uses real numbers that are actually from my hometown. Yes, gas is awfully expensive. But what you'll see here is I fixed the number of units. So in liters, that would be 25 liters. And in gallons, that would be 6.6043 gallons. And if I substitute everything into that formula that we used before, then I'm going to get a final average cost per unit of $1.60875 per liter if I average out all of these price fluctuations or $4.50918 per gallon. And again, this is taking all eight of those weeks and averaging out the amount that I spend when I only put in a fixed number of units. Since we've been paying attention in this video, then we know this is an absolute garbage way to do it. Instead, we're going to fix the number of dollars that we spend. Here you'll notice I have the dollars fixed at $40 Canadian or $30 US. 
And if I substitute everything in the exact same way and I calculate the number of units of gas that I'll have, then you'll notice that my values are a little bit different. Now it's $1.60692 per liter and $4.50353 per gallon. They are strictly less than they were when I paid by fixing the number of units. This will mathematically always be the case. There's never a scenario where paying with a fixed number of dollars will equal more than the fixed number of units. And the only possibility where they're the same is when gas prices don't fluctuate. However, because gas fluctuates with the price of oil, we know that this is never going to be the case. And therefore, every time you pull up to the pump, it is mathematically sound and it will always save you money to fix the number of dollars you spend rather than just filling up blindly no matter what the price. It is not my opinion, it's just the cold, hard numbers. If you found this video helpful and then it saves you money on gas, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, of course, let us know in the comments section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next.